2020 was one of the most bizarre years in world history. Heightened states of emergency across the nation as a number of coronavirus cases soars above 3,000. One person with coronavirus in King County, Washington State has died. Yo. This is more serious than I thought it was. And on top of that, of course, as always, we have the 2020 NFL Draft. The top 10 picks of the 2020 NFL Draft were poised on the edge of glory or failure. I know somebody probably in there, but this is getting rugged right here. Huh? This is getting rugged right here, buddy. Relax, come down, come down. Come down, come down. Come down, come down. Come down, come down. This class of prospects stood as a testament to the unforgiving nature of professional football and the draft. Two Hall of Fame quarterbacks meet shocking draft busts. This is what actually happened to the top 10 picks of the 2020 NFL Draft. With the first pick in the 2020 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. Joe Burrow quarterback as a quick rhythm passer with outstanding poise, accuracy, and playmaking ability. Burrow plays like a pass-first point guard running a fast break in the open court with a knack for getting the ball to his playmakers in their sweet spots. But were they right about him? Right. the one? I hope so. No, okay. Okay. Ah! Coming from LSU, the Heisman Trophy winner was lauded as a can't-miss prospect, and he has proven to be just that. He announced his arrival in the NFL by passing for 316 yards and three touchdowns in a closely fought loss to the Cleveland Browns. But sadly, any hopes for an Offensive Rookie of the Year were dashed by a brutal ACL and MCL tear in his left knee in Week 11. Like, I mean, this injury was just so brutal, it actually hurts watching this. It was honestly a very devastating way for him to end his first year in the league, but it left Bengals fans very optimistic that they had a quarterback of the future on their hands. That optimism then went into overdrive when the Bengals drafted Jamar Chase, bringing together a lethal LSU combination. Burrow threw for 4,611 yards and 34 touchdowns, with Chase corralling 1,455 of those yards. With the duo lighting it up in the NFL, the Bengals made it to their first Super Bowl since 1988, but they unfortunately fell just short of glory after losing to the LA Rams. Burrow was awesome in his first full season though, almost winning the team a Super Bowl and earning himself the Comeback Player of the Year award. They came close again one year later in a season where Burrow threw for another 4,475 yards and 35 touchdowns. Before another injury plague season in 2023 limited Burrow to just 10 games for the second time in his career. And honestly, without a doubt in my opinion, I would say that this first overall selection will go down as a major hit as Super Bowl success is surely not too far away and honestly I could see them making a big push to the Super Bowl as long as his wrist does remain healthy. Another apparent can't miss prospect came off of the board with the second overall selection with Washington drafting defensive end Chase Young. People had said that Ron Rivera grabbed the best player in the draft to fortify a defensive line that could feature five former first round picks. They said that Young was a natural pass rusher with A plus size, athleticism, first step quickness and technical skills. And the best part is, is that he gave them a Julius Peppers like playmaker off the edge. But were they right about him? Many considered Young to be the best player in the 2020 draft class, and it certainly looked like those people were right after his first season in the league. His rookie season got off to the best possible start after he produced one and a half sacks, four tackles, and a forced fumble against the Philadelphia Eagles. He continued to produce throughout the year, racking up a total of seven and a half sacks, 44 tackles, and four forced fumbles. This was good enough for him to win the Defensive Rookie of the Year award, and honestly, all was looking good for the sophomore defensive end. But a sophomore slump turned into a nightmare when he suffered a gruesome ACL tear in week 10. He had produced only one and a half sacks up to that point with the injury bringing an end to a letdown year after such a positive start to his career. And honestly the recovery process for Young was extremely tricky. The way he ended up tearing his ACL he ended up needing a very complex reconstructive surgery and this honestly made him miss a lot of the 2022 season as well. Young returned to health for the 2023 season in which he posted seven and a half sacks and 25 tackles for a combination of the Commanders and the 49ers who he was traded to after just seven games. And I mean, honestly, when you look at the stats of Chase Young, it's been a little bit of a weird career for him. After dazzling as a rookie, he honestly has really underperformed 
ever since that rookie year. But I mean, in contrary, it's tough to gloss over those brutal injuries that he has been ridden with. And honestly, who knows what he could have achieved if he hadn't had those injuries and honestly what the future holds with him in New Orleans. But personally, I just don't really think when you take a defensive end two overall, that's what you want out of him. With the third pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Jeff Okuda, defensive back, Ohio State. He's at his best in press coverage, but displays the footwork and movement skills to shadow from afar. But were they right about him? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And I mean, when you look at the tape, he has everything you wanted in a quarterback, but the output has fallen well short of expectations. And similar to the two players that have came before him, honestly, injuries were a big part of Okuda's career too. He's only managed to play in 10 games across his first two seasons. He did finally manage to string together some consistent playing time in his third season with Detroit, but after producing just one interception and seven passes defended, the Lions decided to cut ties with the former third overall pick. It was quite the fall from grace for Okuda, who was traded to the Atlanta Falcons for just a fifth round pick. Any hopes of him redefining the magic that made him such a highly anticipated draft prospect were quickly dashed as he failed to make an impact in Atlanta, earning a PFF coverage grade of just 46 and failing to register an interception. He since then has changed teams again, signing with the Houston Texans for the 2024 season. But I mean, like in totality, this one has to go down as a miss because he just really hasn't lived up to be anything. But again, maybe in Houston, he can turn it around with Devin Singletary and that defense. With the fourth pick, in the 2020 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Andrew Thomas, tackle, Georgia. Thomas is a rugged blocker in the run game, but also displays the balance, body control, and anchor to snuff out pass rushers off the edge. But how good was he really? Maybe, maybe not, maybe f yourself. Thomas ended up being the first offensive lineman off the board with that fourth overall pick. And while Thomas only started 41 games at college, he entered the league as a 21 year old and his age certainly appeared to be a problem for him early. As a rookie, he did struggle giving up 10 sacks against far older and more experienced defensive playmakers, but he made solid improvements as a sophomore. He's been a consistent starter for the Giants, peaking in a 2022 season where he logged 1,050 snaps across all 16 starts he had. He has conceded just seven sacks over the last two years combined. Like, I mean, that number is just astronomical. And on top of this, it's only while having four penalties in that time. Like, I mean, that's absolutely absurd. And don't get me wrong, this Giants offensive line struggled mightily in 2023, but they at least know that they have a talented left tackle in Andrew Thomas to build around. With the fifth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Tua Tungavaloa quarterback, Alabama. Tagovailoa has a game that reminds some of a young Drew Brees with his accuracy, anticipation, and touch earning high mark. He is a franchise quarterback with the potential to elevate the play of others with his talent and leadership skills. And personally, I think Drew Brees might be a little bit of a stretch here, but how right were they? I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I didn't do fucking shit. During the later stages of his college career, Tua was considered the most likely player to go number one overall, with the tank for Tua phrase doing the rounds during the 2019 NFL season. As it turns out, he drifted all the way to the fifth overall pick. And honestly, after a shaky start, it, it has been a little bit of an improvement for Tua as we've seen him grow in the NFL. But personally for me, I really still don't think he's that great of a quarterback. And I think that if he didn't have Mike McDaniel and Tyreek Hill, I really don't think that Tua would be a quarterback in the NFL. I think he would have already been out of the league. But as I digress, after passing for 1,814 yards and 11 touchdowns in 10 games as a rookie, his yards per attempt saw a significant boost following his sophomore season, thanks again mainly to the arrival of Tyree Kill, who as I said before, is one of the NFL's greatest wide receivers to play the position. With not only Tyreek Hill, but now Jalen Waddle to also aim at, he has made giant strides in his 
progression as a quarterback, averaging 8.6 yards per attempt over his last two seasons. Mike McDaniel as head coach has produced a lethal offense, helping to lead the NFL in passing in 2023 and making the Dolphins one of the very best teams in the AFC. Their 27.9 points on average per game was the third best in the NFL, but disappointing playoff performances have ended in the last two seasons on a sour note. It's been a good career for Tua so far, but he needs to start showing some strong playoff runs in 2024 to convince Miami that again, he is the future of their franchise at the quarterback position and to start proving some of the haters wrong. With the sixth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Justin Herbert, quarterback, Oregon. Justin Herbert is our sixth selection where they said some pretty interesting things about him where they said Herbert has an outstanding arm and is a nimble athlete with the capacity to make accurate throws on the move. Playing in a play action scheme that creates huge voids in the intermediate range should help Herbert thrive as a passer. But how right were they about Herbert? Help me! Help me! Being selected right after Tua has honestly in some ways tied the two quarterbacks together throughout their young careers, with fans of the two franchises constantly arguing over who made the right choice. And yes, while Miami has had more wins in the recent years, I think personally that Justin Herbert is just far better a quarterback and just much more elite at that position than Tua. And Charger fans even got early bragging rights after Herbert's spectacular rookie season landed him the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. His 4,336 passing yards and 31 touchdowns quickly gave him top 10 quarterback status and after passing for a record high 14,089 yards across his first three seasons, that status improved to a top 5 ranking in the NFL. And I mean, like ever since he has stepped onto the field, Herbert has looked like an elite quarterback in the league. But I mean, when you have a lackluster coaching staff and an even worse wide receiver group than you did the year before, it just seems like they're wasting the kid's talent at this point. In 2023, Herbert suffered his worst season on a statistical basis, but it came amidst a backdrop of team drama that saw both the head coach and general manager get fired. Jim Harbaugh is the next man up to lead the Chargers, and he certainly brings an impressive of resume with him. The only question is how much of an opportunity will Justin Herbert have to show off his talents in Harbaugh's run-heavy game plan. Carolina Panthers select Derek Brown, defensive tackle. Auburn. The Panthers needed to fortify the interior of their defensive line with a disruptive force at defensive tackle. Brown is an absolute monster as an interior defender with A plus size, strength, and explosiveness. But just how dominant has he really been? Like, I mean, when you look at Brown, he is a colossal figure in the center of the Panthers defensive line, towering over people with his six foot five, 320 pound frame. And ever since he has been drafted, the Panthers have featured him exclusively on that defensive line. And like, yes, while he doesn't appear in the box score as often as you'd like to see, his impact is still seen on tape. It was a tough start to his career as it is often for the case of an interior defensive lineman, but 2023 saw Brown register 103 total tackles, including 57 solo tackles to go along with two sacks and a career high 15 quarterback hits. And I mean, while the Panthers are looking to bounce back from what was a horrible season in 2023, Brown offers reliability and is solid in the center of the Panthers defensive line. He has started in all but one possible game over his career so far and looks to be panning out as a good top 10 selection by the Panthers, who honestly, I don't think Bryce Young is going to pan out and be a great top 10 pick for the Panthers, but that's a different story for a different video on a different day. With the eighth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Isaiah Simmons, linebacker Clemson. Simmons is a unique playmaker with impact potential as a blitzer, or a cover guy versus tight ends and running backs. It will be interesting to see how the Cardinals use a multi-dimensional player with a raw set of skills and versatility. Were they right? I lost. <laughs> And now look, while number eight is a relatively high pick to take a linebacker, Simmons enthralled scouts with his versatility as a skill set and impressive athleticism. I mean, when this guy was coming out of college, he lined up on the defensive line in the slot and at linebacker over his young career, making it difficult for him to really nail down any level of consistency. As a sophomore in the league though, Simmons collected a very useful 81 solo tackles, seven passes defended, and four forced fumbles, but he wasn't able to 
converted into an established role. After one more year with the Cardinals, he was traded to the New York Giants prior to the 2023 seasons, which tells you all you need to know about Arizona's opinion on their top 10 pick. And while in New York, Simmons has only played 378 snaps, registering one sack, 30 tackles, an interception, and two pass breakups. And to be fair, there is talent there, but it's fair to say that Simmons has underwhelmed given his draft pedigree. It's gonna be really interesting to see what he can do in his second season as a Giant. With the ninth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, Jacksonville Jaguars select CJ Henderson, defensive back, Florida. Henderson flashes natural instincts, awareness, and ball skills in coverage, and is efficient in man and zone coverage. Tackling was an issue, but he is arguably the best cornerback in the class. Were they right? Who the f*** is that guy? And as I just said in that draft grade when they came out with that pick, the only reason that many people were high on CJ Anderson was because of his speed and his athleticism coming out of college. Like, the dude looked like a freak of nature at the cornerback position out of Florida. He really did appear to be that all around corner, but in reality, he was honestly so far from it, it was insane. Henderson struggled from the outset and never made any improvements, earning a 58.3 coverage grade as a rookie before not topping 50 in his three seasons since. He has conceded a passer rating of over 100 in every season he has played, registering just three interceptions and has given up 1,680 yards. Like, I mean, this dude was horrible as a top 10 pick for the Jags. Like, I mean, this goes down as a massive loss for the Jags, but they actually did end up recuperating some of it by getting a third round pick out of the Panthers when they traded them to him. But I mean, it got even worse in Carolina. Like, the dude was horrible in Carolina. So, I mean, it was definitely right for the Jags to trade him while they could. And rounding out the top 10 of the 2020 draft class, we have offensive tackle Jedrick Williams, who was selected by the Cleveland Browns. The Browns Browns added a bully to the offensive line with the size, strength, and power to maul defenders in the run game while stalemating pass rushers off of the edge. But were they right about him? What do you think? And I mean, to be fair, Willis had the unfortunate task of filling the shoes of Hall of Fame left tackle Joe Thomas and it really wasn't the smoothest of transitions. And I mean, in reality, he did fall a little bit short, but he wasn't like terrible, but he also wasn't great for the Browns. He did fall short of those qualities that you did love to have in Joe Thomas off the left side, anchoring down the left tackle position, but there are far bigger problems for that left side of the line than him. Like, I mean, with left tackle being one of the most important positions in the game, being a solid player is enough to keep Willis in the league for a long time, verified by the fact that Cleveland were willing to pick up his fifth year option. Like, I mean, when you look at his stats, honestly, he's like right in the middle of the road. He hasn't given up more than six sacks in a season, but at the same time, he also hasn't given up more or less than three at the same time. Like, I mean, this dude at best is above average, and when you're taking a tackle inside the top 10 of the draft you're really not looking for above average you want like superstar talent in one of these picks but it's the browns they're notorious for taking average talent inside the top 10 but i mean all in all the top 10 from this draft was about what you expect it to be besides the fact that you did get some hall of famers inside of joe burrow and justin herbert like those guys are going to be legit hall of famers by the end of their careers i do think but at the same time also your fair share of misses in the form of jeff okuda and cj anderson but one position that wasn't really addressed inside the top 10 but ended up being a huge part of this first round of draft picks was the wide receiver position where six were taken inside the first round. Henry Ruggs and Jalen Rager have gone down in infamy for different reasons, but the other wide receivers taken around them might go down as the best players from the whole 2020 class. CD Lamb at 17 and Justin Jefferson at pick 22 currently stand as the two best wide receivers in the NFL with five all pro selections between them. Like, I mean, that's absolutely absurd that those guys were taken that low in the draft. Like, some of these teams have to be absolutely kicking themselves that they took guys like CJ Henderson instead of Justin Jefferson. But with that being said, there is an absolute masterclass of wide receivers coming in this year with Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. in this year's draft class. And I want to know what you guys think. Do you think any of those guys that are coming out this year can rival the likes of Justin Jefferson or CeeDee Lamb? Let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next one.